Isaiah chapter 9. I'm going to read just a couple of uh, portions from verse 6. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And then we're going to skip down and it says, And his name shall be called Wonderful. And his name shall be called Wonderful. I'd like to preach this morning on the topic. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life when we're talking about the life of Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus Christ. The life of the one who came to save his people from his sins. The, the, the life of the Prince of Peace. The, the, uh, the life of the one who came in order to die. Jesus Christ. What a wonderful life he led. It, 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 it's wonderful beyond imaginings. We, we sing songs about it and we, we, we talk about it. But just all the glory, if, if we could just picture just the things that occurred in Jesus' life when he, the Word became flesh and He dwelt among men. And some of them were able to behold the, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. What a wonderful life. The life of Jesus. Now it's wonderful from the prophecies. Here in Isaiah 9 verse 6, and Isaiah had many prophecies concerning uh, uh, the Christ. As a matter of fact, I was trying to think this morning, I was trying to determine, I know that I read um, years ago that there were 300 prophecies and I couldn't remember if it was concerning Christ himself uh, or just uh, uh, concerning the birth, but I know there were many, many prophecies concerning Christ and uh, just the prophecies uh, of His coming. We see here in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon His shoulder, and His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Uh, we were told, and we'll cover a lot of this about how a virgin would conceive. And we were told that uh, uh, in the book of Micah that he would be born in the city of Bethlehem. And uh, so many things are told to us about Christ. And Christ fulfilled those prophecies. Prophecies that were made hundreds of years. Sometimes thousands of years before his birth. He fulfilled each and every prophecy. Many, many were expecting his coming. They had learned in their temples. They had that, that in the temple. They had learned in their synagogues. They had been taught that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was coming. They didn't know him by name. Uh, they knew that one named Emmanuel will come. They knew that 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 one uh, would come from God. That one and the government would be on their shoulders, and his kingdom would be an everlasting kingdom. They knew that. They looked forward to that, and he came. And many missed the coming of the one they were waiting for. We scurry about our business nowadays, and we look forward. To his coming again. The world knows it's happening. The world knows it, it, it has been prophesied. It has been told. It has been preached. It has been, been, been sung about. That Jesus Christ, as a matter of fact, that song we sang. I shared this a, a few months ago. That song that we sang. Joy to the world. We consider that. Most people consider that a Christmas song. But it's actually a song about his coming kingdom about his second coming, about the, the, the things that will occur when Jesus Christ comes and set up, sets up his kingdom here upon the earth. Many of us are looking toward that day. They know about it, but many will miss the second coming of Christ just as many who were looking forward to his first coming missed out on it. To me, it is amazing. If someone were able to predict with great accuracy things that were going to happen, uh, 
Uh, we're surprised when the weatherman's right, are we not? You know, they've got all that, that scientific equipment. They've got all that uh, uh, fancy uh, 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 learning that they do in order pr to predict the weather. And uh, we're still surprised when they get it right. I've noticed uh, over here the last uh, year or two, I've noticed when they do that seven-day forecast, you know, the, 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 the forecast that they had for seven days from now, if you watch it every day, that forecast <coughs> changes every day. Very rarely what they said seven days ago will occur. The Bible gives us these prophecies. And Jesus fulfilled. Matthew is very good at, at pointing out uh, there at, at his birth all the prophecies that were fulfilled one by one as it tells the story of the birth of Christ. If someone were able to predict with that accuracy anything else, we would believe anything they said. But people have missed the birth of Christ, the life of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ. Oh, how wonderful the prophecies. He is wonderful in his person. Now, every baby is wonderful, is it not? I've got a friend who just uh, had a son a little over a week ago, and uh, he can't take enough pictures of that kid. And here he is, you know, they, they all look the same to me, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see how this kid changes every five seconds, but uh, just taking all these pictures and he's posting them online. But this baby, the scripture says that he's the almighty God. The almighty God. This was not just any man. You know, you, you think that, that, that uh, 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 some things are self-explanatory. And I didn't bother to read this, but I was Googling in, in my studies and... and uh, <clears throat> I can't remember what exactly I was looking for, but the topic came up and something I was Googling, should Jesus be worshipped as God? I don't know where the person was coming from. I don't know what he was saying. I don't know what he was, what he was trying, but, but obviously, yes. Isaiah made it very clear, this one that would come, this, this child that would be born, the son that would be given, is the Almighty God. Now why the Almighty God would come down and dwell among us and live among us, you know, we're bothered by the things we see, are we not? We're bothered by the things that we hear, are we not? You turn on the TV and, and, and there, there, there's nothing but filth on TV. You walk around and you hear filthy conversations and you hear foul language all the time. They can't, they're even putting it in commercials. You know, you used to be, nobody would, no uh, 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 product would want uh, uh, profanity involved in trying to sell their product. They, that would be like, well, people will turn against us. They don't care anymore. They know that people don't care anymore. And just like Lot, Lot was, was uh, according to the scripture, he was vexed by the filthy conversation all around him. We have that same problem today. Can you imagine God Almighty? God in the flesh? Coming down and dwelling among those like us. I told you in the Sunday school hour that there was a, a video that I watched and, and people approach him and say, uh, um, how can a, a, a loving and all-powerful God allow all the evil to go in the world? And he said, the question is not that, is why, why we being as evil as we are and all loving and all-powerful God, why he doesn't destroy us? And he quoted the verse from Lamentations that says, it's by his mercies we are not consumed. 
Jesus was a man. Jesus suffered as a man. He sorrowed as a man. He hungered. He thirsted as a man. He felt pain. He, he, he felt the loneliness that we feel. He felt sadness. He felt happiness. He felt everything that a man felt. And at the same time, he was the mighty God. He was the mighty God. He's wonderful in his presence. Another thing it says about him in this verse is counselor. He should be called counselor. Never forget that Jesus is our counselor. Jesus is our guide. He sent His Spirit to come and dwell among us. He counsels us by His Word when we read the Word of God and His Spirit makes it alive in our hearts. When we become angry, we need a counselor. Go to the Word of God. When, 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 when uh, we're sad, when we're depressed, go to the Word of God. When we don't know what to do about a situation, go to the Word of God. What a great counselor. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. It says, And the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Now in Matthew chapter 1, it reveals that Emmanuel means God with us. Oh, what a counselor. He came and was with us. He came and he was among us. He was with us. He understands our problems. Hebrew says that he is touched by our afflictions. You're not going through anything that your counselor doesn't understand. He knows our sufferings. <coughs> and he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. What a counselor we have. Every once in a while, I'll think of a situation I was in years ago. And I learned from that situation, and I will still do it from time to time. When, when, when I'm down and I'm outcast and I'm troubled, just start singing one of those great hymns. Start singing one of those great Christian songs. What peace there is. Well, what joy it is in our soul that we have such a counselor who came and was God with us. And He's still with us. He's still among us. He's still in the hearts of those that believe in him. He is wonderful in his presence. He is wonderful as a progenitor. The scripture says there back in our text that he's the everlasting father. Now we talk about Christ being the son of God. The only begotten Son of God. We also know that God is our Father as well. Now God is not everyone's Father. God is not everyone's Father. The, the, the Scripture plainly teaches that. Man says, well, He's everyone's Father. We're all God's children. Uh, I've heard that. I've heard people sing that. We're not all God's children. The Scripture said some... Well, matter of fact, at one point we were all children of disobedience. 
Jesus told the Pharisees that they were children of the devil. They were liars and children of the father of liars. We are not all God's children, but what a great thing it is to be one of God's children. The everlasting father. He is our father forever. He is our father. He knew us in eternity past. He chose us in eternity past. He adopted us into his family and he will be our father forever. What a wonderful father we have. You know, many people are um, estranged from their earthly father. Some never knew their earthly father. I've heard accounts where people had uh, uh, trouble coming to grips with God their father because the only father that they had They didn't have very good thoughts about. They didn't have a very good opinion of. They didn't respect fatherhood. But once they come to know God is the father, they know a father who loves them. They know a father who will do anything for them. A, a good father will lay down his life for his children. They will, he will do anything for their benefit, for their good. He will withhold anything from their, for their good. You know, you wouldn't be much of a father if you just let your kids do anything they wanted to do. And our father's a better father than we ever are. Sometimes the, the, the greatest thing our father ever does is tell us no. That was my dad's favorite word, no. Dad, can I know? Can, uh, am I allowed to know? It, it, you know? I don't even think I even got to ask him sometimes what I was going to ask him. You know, he was very cautious with me. My father withholds anything from me that would give me harm. Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give your children good gifts, how much greater is our heavenly father who gives us great and wonderful gifts. What a father we have. Those of you that are fathers know that many nights you've wait, uh, laid awake because you were concerned with your children. My father never sleeps. My father watches over me while I sleep. Apparently we had quite a windstorm last night. My father was there. He was controlling that wind. He is wonderful in his procreation. That verse that we just read said, there in Isaiah 7, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Once again, that means God with us. A virgin conceived. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, let, let's uh, before we get into that, let's let's go to the well, not just the prophecy, but where it actually happened in the book of Luke, Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one, and uh, we'll start reading at verse twenty six. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city, a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Thou art blessed, or blessed art thou, among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast her mind 
cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Now we'll probably get into this a little bit uh, later, but Jesus means Jehovah saves. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing shall be, call, uh, shall be born in thee, shall be called the Son of God. He was wonderful in his procreation because he is the only begotten Son of God. A virgin conceived and had a child. What does that mean? That means that Jesus is not a child of Adam. All of us here are children of Adam. Adam sinned. We have Adam's sinful nature upon us. Because Adam sinned, we inherited his sinful nature. We desire sin. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was not of the seed of man. He was born of God. He was holy and pure from the womb. The scripture said we came out of our mother's womb lying. Jesus Christ came out holy and pure, untainted by Adam's sin, lived a sinless life. He was tempted like Adam was tempted. Adam was sinless at the beginning too. He was tempted like Adam was tempted. He was tempted like you were tempted. But he lived a sinless life and remained the pure and perfect and spotless lamb that was necessary for the sacrifice. We sang that song, We Three Kings, a little while ago. And for years, I wouldn't sing that song. I didn't want to sing that song because... When you read the Bible story, it doesn't say anything about kings. It doesn't say anything about kings. And um, so, well, that's not scriptural. But in Isaiah 60, it tells us that the kings would come and bring him gold and frankincense. They gave three gifts. Now, it never says there are three of them, by the way, but there are three gifts given. Gold, myrrh, and frankincense. And that song touches upon. Gold recognizes that he is the king. That he is the king. That he is the king of the Jews that was prophesied. That he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And gold is what you give to a king. Myrrh. Myrrh is something that you give to someone for embalming. Not a very good baby gift. When you go to the registries there when people are having a baby, they, nobody asks for myrrh. But those wise men knew that this baby had to be our sacrifice. And then frankincense is what you give to God. When you offered up their prayers, when they had their temple, temple worship, they would burn frankincense and the, they to symbolize that their prayers were going up to God. Christ was wonderful in his procreation because he was the only one worthy to be the only begotten Son of God, the only begotten Lamb of God. He was wonderful in his purpose. Go over to, to Matthew, Matthew's account. <clears throat> I 
Matthew 1, verse 18. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, he was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him, in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Remember I told you that meant Jehovah saves? For he shall save his people from their sins. He was wonderful in his purpose because his purpose was to save his people from their sins. The angels told the shepherds that that night a Savior was born in the city of David. The bulletin says He is the reason for the season. His reason for coming was to die for our sins to save His people, to redeem us from our sins. What a wonderful purpose. People miss that. They miss that in the story of Jesus. Christ is the only Savior. Christ is the only way to be forgiven of your sins. And unless you are forgiven of your sins, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. He was wonderful in his performance. He not only came to save his people from their sins, he actually did it. He completed the task that was set up uh, about him. He completed his purpose. In Isaiah 53. Verse 3 says, And he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep are gone astray, for we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers, he was dumb, is dumb, so he opened, openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he hath cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people he was stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. And shall my righteous servant justify many... For he shall bear 
their iniquities. What is that saying? It's saying he came to save his people from their sins. He was offered up as a sacrifice for our sins. He died a terrible death on the cross to pay for our sins. And when he made that payment, he declared, it is finished. And he died performing the purpose that he came for. He is wonderful in his performance. And he's wonderful in his promotion. That final verse there in Isaiah 53. Therefore shall I divide him a portion with the great and shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgression and he bare the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressions. That means that after he was despised, after he was beaten with many stripes, after he took upon our iniquities, after he hung upon the cross, after he died and was put in the grave, he rose again. All glory to God. He rose again and he ever lives and he makes intercession for our transgressions. That's the reason he came. That's the reason for the season. That's why it's such a wonderful life. Would you stand?